Right, hello there ladies and gentlemen uh, and welcome uh, to uh, this latest video that we're going to show for you today. Um, once again we are relating to the um, PlayStation 4 Blue Light of Death um, and today we're going to cover a slightly different scenario um, and yet another different type of Blue Light of Death which I've come across a couple of times now. Uh, now this board here um, is one that's actually uh, being reworked um, and actually uh, I have fired it up to test that it works and all's good. Um, so we're just sort of breaking it down to do a final clean up of it now just to um, get it reassembled and, um, and back to its owner. Now this particular uh, console did have a bit of a time constraint on it so unfortunately it's not one that I've been able to sort of like rig the camera up and, and show you the various bits and pieces for it because unfortunately we just haven't had time for that uh, in this instance. However that being said, uh, the other videos uh, on this channel do showcase the various bits and pieces that I have done uh, previously to repair this sort of problem. And, you know, I will link them uh, in annotations as we go along uh, at the various points that I feel that, 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 you know, would be useful for you to look over. Um, so today, uh, like I said, this particular uh, machine came in initially with a, um, what I like to call a, a six second blue light of death. And... It was a bit of a strange one, to be honest, because I've seen this on a couple of consoles now, um, both of which um, seem to have suffered some form of uh, drop damage. Um, so the first one um, that I came across this on um, actually had uh, been thrown across uh, a room at this poor guy by his wife. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I think the less said about that one, the better. Um Actually, no, come to think of it, this is the third one I've seen, because I've seen another one, uh, which did have a little bit of drop damage, um, which, um, albeit only minor, um, so so we actually got away with only fixing one of these two issues um, to get the console back up and running again. But this one, uh, this one required the full Monty. So although I can't show you um, the process on this particular board, like I say, I will link in the uh, in the annotations to the the various parts of the videos on this channel where we've covered what we've done. Um, and we're just going to go over what we did. So uh, basically, a, a six second blue light of death is very similar to what I would deem a traditional blue light of death. So if you have a look on our um, PS4 um, PSU Transformer failure video, you will see right at the start of that video that we have uh, two consoles lined up side by side, both with a blue light of death, but both for a very different reason. And you would have seen that one of them um, came on and went off more or less within a fraction of a second uh, with a double click. Uh, and that is a power supply related blue light of death failure. So if you get something like that, replacing your power supply or repairing the power supply you've already got, um, should be enough to fix it. The other console, the one on the left-hand side of the screen, um, that is a slightly more complicated issue. That is a hardware failure uh, at motherboard component level. So uh, often that is APU, occasionally it's Southbridge, occasionally RAM, uh, or some other component failure on this board. Um, a six-second blue light of death, to be honest. Like I say, I've only ever seen it on consoles which seem to have suffered some form of drop damage. So either consoles that have been dropped um you know from a fairly minor height um you know that's enough to do it even just being toppled over so if they've been stood in the in the vertical position and they're knocked onto the horizontal on a hard surface i have seen it do it before as well um so what do we do well the first thing of course like i say if you have a look at the um transformer failure uh, video and you have a look at the two consoles there the one on the left the one that has the sort of like uh one and a half two seconds before it turns itself off so you get a quick pulsing blue light and then within, like I say, a couple of seconds, it knocks off. Well, basically, it looks very, very similar to that, uh, only it stays fired up for a quite a bit longer. So I tended to find that what it would do is it would actually pulse uh, for six, seven... Uh, I think the longest I found it do it was for eight seconds, uh, and then the machine would just fade off. So you didn't really hear any clicks or anything like that. The, the blue light literally just faded, you know, as it pulses in and out, fades out and then you know the whole thing just turns off um now the front panel uh input output you know the the power and eject buttons uh during this time are completely unresponsive um once the power goes and the you know the, and the machine returns to a standby state then the power can be you know the, the power button does respond uh and you can turn the machine off um 
and then you can you know you can try and power cycle it and you know watch the whole thing do it again. The eject button will also beep at you during the time when the console's off, but while it's on and it's pulsing blue light, it doesn't. Um, so it's all a bit of a strange one. Now, there's a bit of a giveaway with these things as to where your problem lies, and that is the first thing that I do is take the hard drive out and listen that when you fire it up to see if you can hear a fan. Because if you don't hear any fan, aside from a fan failure or an obvious burnt component on this board, if your machine's been dropped, uh, then the likelihood is, if you've got no fan, you are missing some I.O. on the Southbridge chip, because that seems to control the uh, the fan. So, in this particular instance, like I say, one side sort of like realised what it was doing. I pulled the hard drive, turned it on, and listened to hear if the fan spun, and it didn't. Um, so, what we did is, the Southbridge chip is this one, um, we'll try and get you some focus on it, is that one just there? So this one, here, is your Southbridge chip. So this particular uh, chip here, and the circuitry that goes with it, um, basically controls some degree of your fan, because if I find if you, f <laughs> if you don't have that, you don't get fan. So the first thing to do with this one is, well, what I did with it anyway, what I do with it. Um, you can reboil these, but to be honest, I don't really see the point. Um, they are a plastic substrate uh, chip, so they are prone to warping and bending if you are a little bit clumsy with them. Uh, but more to the point, they don't run particularly hot. They're in a fairly stable portion of the board. Um and so much so, even Sony don't bother putting any heat transfer pads on them or anything. They actually run fairly cool. So you can get away with a, a quality reflow on these particular chips. Um, and now, like I said, I've done a few of these, and that's been more than enough in, in each case. Now, what, when I say reflow it, I don't mean putting it in a pizza oven, attacking it with a hair gun, um, all that sort of bizarre sort of nonsense that, that people seem to think you mean when you say reflow it. When I say reflow it, I mean actually get it onto a proper SMD rework machine. Uh, uh, bring the bring the chip properly up to temperature, give it a nudge test, make sure the balls are wobbling about and they're all molten, and then cool it back down again. Uh, and that should be enough um, to restore your connectivity there. So once we did that and we reassembled to test, we then had fan. Uh, and then we had what I would call a more traditional sort of blue light, if you like. So what was happening then is once we had our fan output back again, well, after we've reflowed that chip, what we then ended up with um, was a rather nice um, sort of constantly pulsing blue light of death. So um, basically you could leave it there till the cows come home and the blue light would just pulse on, pulse off, pulse on, pulse off, uh, at which point the front... Uh, power and eject buttons were completely unresponsive as before. Um, so the only way you could actually kill power to the unit was to actually pull the power lead out. Um, you know. So once we'd done that, um, applying a little bit of pressure over the back of the APU um, gave us a more traditional blue light of death. So uh, when I say more traditional blue light of death, what I'm saying there is the usual... Um, so a two-second blue light of death job. As soon as you released pressure off the APU, it went back to permanently pulsing blue light. As soon as you put a little bit of firm, gentle pressure uh, over the back of the APU, it came down to a, a two-second blue light of death. So at that point, we know we have an issue with the connections on our APU. And as I say, these things, when they're dropped, are rather interesting. And the reason why they're rather interesting is because these APUs, when they are dropped seem to have a habit of taking pads with them. Now, when you lift them, you've got to be really careful with them. Uh, and that's true to be said, uh, regardless of whether you, you know, the console you're working on has been dropped or not. Of course, these things are fairly fragile, uh, as are the contacts on the board and the pins on the back of the chip. But once these machines have been dropped, I tend to find that the ones that have been dropped are really easy to lift pads. Now, on this particular instance, uh, the pads that seem to lift, to be honest, are NC pads, so they're not connected. So, to be honest, they're probably not worth worrying about. If they're NC and they're not connected, then you're fine. They might as well not be there. It's like lifting a ground pad. Provided you've got a ground pad that's good somewhere else, don't worry about it. Um, so, this particular one had four uh, not connected pads which came up with the chip. 
Now, what's happening is, is what I presume is that once the um, the board impacts, it must flex around this area, and obviously it detaches um, a couple of the NC pads. Because of course, if the pads are not connected, they are there, but they have nothing behind them, so there's no traces or internal copper to the board actually tying them down. So they're just glued in place. So they're epoxied in place. So of course, as soon as they have a bit of an impact, boom, you know, bang, the whole they just rip out really, which is what's happened in this particular instance. Um, it's just a bit of a nightmare, of course, because you need to obviously then go and check to see whether those pads are indeed not connected or ground, or whether they're actually needed. Because if they are needed, you've got to repair them. Um, but as I say, luckily on this uh, on one of my uh, donor boards, um, I do keep around uh, the actual APU. Um, socket if you like uh which allows me to get my multimeter on and just meter out the pins uh behind this thing just to see whether they are indeed required or not and luckily enough the ones that seem to lift on these that have been dropped uh, are the not connected pins so if you do find one of those then don't worry about it uh, what i will do is at some point i will knock uh, a similar sort of video up for the um not connected pins uh, on the ground pins on the bottom of these APUs um, so you can see that if you do lift an APU and you do find that you have lifted a pad then you should be able to give it a quick visual reference as to whether the one that you've lifted uh, is the one that's buggered uh, and you are going to have to repair it or whether it's one you can just leave so I will do that for you hopefully at some point over the next week if I get chance to do that I will um, so what do you do if you do find that you've got a pad that's not connected or ground that you've lifted? Well, simple fact is don't worry about it. But when you reball the, the APU, best thing to do, as I say, if the pads are not connected, don't worry about it, just leave them be. Uh, and what you need to do basically is just make sure that when you reball your chip, before you reset the ball, so before you put these back on the um, on the rework station to set the balls once you've actually put the new balls on, uh, is just to take the balls off the spots where there are no corresponding pads anymore. Um, they shouldn't go walkies, you know, they should hold onto the pad um, on the bottom of the BGA um, once you actually go to reattach this chip to the board. But why tempt it? Because at the end of the day, if there's nothing there to connect, um, you know, that particular pin with that with that BGA pad, then what's the point of having the ball there? You might as well leave it out uh, and take the uncertainty out of it. Um, because at the end of the day, they don't serve any purpose anyway. So on this particular board, and I don't know if you will be able to see it, but we did have a couple of pads on the bottom back edge of this board, which were not connected, um, which did lift. And I'm not entirely sure if you will be able to see them on here. I suspect you probably won't. Um... I don't know if you'll be able to tell there, but just at that bottom left edge, you can see sort of like the corner couple of balls, and there's a bit of a gap between where you start to see the balls come back in. Um, and like I said, there was those two there, and then on the there's like an inner um, two rows of pins, uh, and the sixth and eighth pin um, of, of those two rows have actually come up, and they were not connected as well. So there were four on this particular board, uh, four not connected pads. Um, which came up uh, on the on the bottom of this board. As I say, I, I only find that happens on boards that have been dropped or suffered some sort of drop damage. Um, so, I mean, the best of the time, you know, these boards are actually fairly sturdy uh, and, and they are hard um, to rip pads off unless you're careless uh, or a little bit clumsy. Um, but as I say, once they've been dropped, the NC pads on these uh, APUs do seem to lift um for some reason but anyway um we reseated you know we took this off and we reballed it and when we put it back together to test um the blue light sorry uh you know came on as expected and that they gave way to a white light uh and the console does appear to be functioning normally so uh like i said we just took, disassembled it now just to give it a, a run f uh under the uh the bj with some alcohol just to flux out, uh, fish out any flux nasties. Uh, we're just going to give this a final clean uh, before we reassemble and send it back. So, um, you know, like I said, what we'll do is we'll show you it working, obviously, because we, we don't like cheating. 
um, just to prove it works. But yeah, if you do suffer uh, a six second blue light of death and you may have dropped your console or suspect it may have suffered a little bit of drop damage, then as I say, first thing to do, pop the hard drive out and listen for your fan. If you've no fan, reflow this thing here. Reflow your south bridge. Um, like I say, then put it back together to see if you get some fan. If you do get some fan, put your hard disk back in, you might get lucky and that might be enough to sort it. On one of the three instances of drop consoles I've seen, that has been enough to rectify it. The other two required further rework to the APU. And as I say, they all the, the, those two APUs seem to lift uh, NC pads once they've been dropped. So probably not a lot to worry about, but it's always worth checking to see if the pad you've lifted is or not connected or whether it is actually uh, a required pad. Because if you go through the process of e-balling this and you just think, oh, it's okay, it'll be a not connected um then it is a bit of a nightmare if it is required because then you've got to do the whole lot again um and at the end of the day if you are doing this for, you know i'm doing it as a hobby and it'd be a pain in the ass for me never mind if you were actually trying to make a living out of this and you go spend double the time redoing doing something because you know you didn't check um but what i will do is coming up in the next week i do intend to actually go through um a couple of procedures as to how you can maybe spot uh, a lifted pad because some people may not understand it um, uh, we'll go through and we'll identify some lifted pads uh, which means I'm going to have to go and trash one of my scrap boards from somewhere um, but yeah we'll go through we'll lift a pad we'll show you what it looks like and we'll show you how you can reinstate it um, and the various bits and pieces you can try to spot whether it's uh, a ground pin or whether it's not connected pin um, and what I'll also do is like I say at some point I will get you a schematic uh, for the APU site to spot uh, ground and not connected so that at least you can tell well if it's not one of those then you need to repair it um, so I'll try and get that done in the next week for you uh, as I say what we'll do is we'll get this reassembled and we'll go down and we'll test it for you and just make sure it works but yeah if you do find yourself with a five six seven eight second blue light of death uh, and no fan then this is probably your culprit um, a combination of Southbridge or APU or you know Southbridge alone if you've no fan um, if you do find you've got fan, uh, then I'd leave the South Bridge alone and just go back for the APU. Um, but like I say, do be careful when you lift because you may find that some of the pads have been weakened or even, you know, uh, detached from the board. Um, so do be careful, um, like I say. But yeah, in that instance, uh, that is what you need to do with a five, six, seven, eight blue, uh, second blue light of death. So like I say, we'll go through, we'll reassemble and we'll test it. So... I'll meet you back downstairs. Right, well, here we go then. So we've got the uh, PS4 all hooked up and reassembled. Um, so this is it down here. As I, as you can probably see, it isn't the um, it isn't the cleanest example of a, of a PlayStation in the world, but, you know, that matters not because we should fire this up. And hopefully... There we go. <laughs> so as you can see, that now works. Hopefully we'll get um, we'll get into the OS. Oh, okay, so it's going through the uh, the initial setup. So that's good. That'll do me. Um, so what we'll do is we can get this back now to uh, to its rightful owner and um, jobs are done. So I will see you on the uh, on the next vid. Thanks for that. And uh, like I say, if you uh, found this useful, uh, then please comment, rate, uh, and subscribe to this channel. Um, if you do think I've got some more stuff uh, coming up that would be of some use to you, so like I say, I'm a, I'm a, um, I have a flick through some of my uh, my other bits and pieces. I do try and keep content coming up regularly. Uh, and like I say, if you do have any questions or anything, I will do my best to get back to you. So if you want to pop them in the comments below. Uh, and as I say, I will see you on the next vid. Cheers then, boys and girls. Take care for now. Bye-bye.